dad died in 1988, I wrote a book about boxing, a memoir about boxing, my dad and I, but I couldn't publish it. Then I wrote the Bill Walsh book, and for 10 years I've been writing a novel. And it's a lot of fun to write a novel, but it's hard for me. So um, I think that that has something to do with it. In addition, I do a lot of writing. I write four columns a week, and that takes up a lot of time. And probably, maybe if I weren't doing that, I would have written books. But I'm, I'm happy to write the columns. I, I, I like that kind of work. I like the action. Have you regretted not taking time off to write books? No, I couldn't have anyway because I needed the money. I couldn't just take time off. I needed. I have a kid now. He's he's a junior at UCLA, and I I certainly have to have an income to put him through. No, I um, I I have not felt that way. I have not felt that I needed to be um, remembered by posterity or to make a mark like that. As I say, part of what I like in daily journalism is the action. I, I like the drama and the feedback and the rush. I guess there's a rush in it, and I get the rush all the time, and I, and I, I really like it. How do you do your job differently at age 63 than if you had your identical job but you were 33? Yeah. Um, I, I have better judgment, meaning I know... Uh, What's a better column? Where to go for the column? I'm better connected um, with the people I need to talk to. Um, in my writing, when I was younger, there was an anger that came out. And Luke, I don't know where the anger came from. I don't know where it was. It was an anger that came out that when I look at, at uh, uh, and it was in a higher per, uh, percentage of columns than it should have been, it embarrasses me a little bit. I think my stuff is more balanced, more mature um, now and it expresses more different moods and points of view. I think I'm better now than, than when I was the man. I could, again, I could be wrong. Maybe I'm not, but that's how I experienced it. Um, so I, I, I think I have better judgment, and I'm more economical with my time, n nowhere to go. Uh, how much do you not get out there and physically cover things because you're 63 instead of 30? I, I cover more. Um, it's a smaller paper the Press Democrat than the Chronicle, and they need me to be in more places. For example, yesterday morning, I drove from Oakland to Santa Clara and interviewed Jed York, the 27-year-old co-owner or whatever he is of the Niners, came home, then after a few hours went down to the Coliseum Arena, interviewed Don Nelson before the game, watched the game, did stuff after the game, wrote columns and blogs. So yesterday was like a 13-hour day. I actually seemed to, to work harder but I'm, I seem to be physically fit enough to do it, although I think, you know, I, I, it concerns me how long I'll be able to do it, but I, I, I seem to work harder. At the Chronicle, I only wrote three columns a week, and, and toward the end, when I saw where it was going, it was almost like a sinecure. I didn't, I didn't work hard for them. Some mornings, I'd be done with my column by 9.30 and drive down to Stanford and spend the day with the Stanford football team working on my book. I, used to, I was so alienated, I used to think that what I was on was a, a um, Chronicle scholarship. I mean, I always handed in my column, but at, at the, uh, I didn't work as hard on it um, as I probably do on them now. There are a lot of Q&As on your blogs. Do you transcribe them yourself? Yes. Um, it's it's tedious. I just recently got one of those little um, recorders, digital recorders. Yes. But my handwriting, as I get older, is really bad, and I I can't read it read it as well. So I do that, and plus in blogs, you sort of have to have the correct words. So I've been I've been doing that, uh, and I'm I'm I have a little earpiece I put in, and I I just like the young guys. I just sit there and type away, and um, you know I'm I'm getting pretty good at it. Now, Luke, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to give, uh, if it's okay with you, I'm going to give you till 9 o'clock, which okay. I've 10 of now, because my wife is now yelling down to me. I promised yeah. I would do something with her. I okay, hope great. I, no, no, I that's, that's, that's great. No, 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 no. This is, this is awesome. Like, there was the, the co-author of Freakonomics, he wrote a book on Rocky, not uh, Franco Harris, uh, a book about heroes, because Franco Harris was his hero when he was a kid, so I feel a little bit like uh, him. Because uh, you know you were my hero when I was like you know eighteen, nineteen, twenty. So this is a this is a real blast for me. Well, I I hope so. I hope I'm doing okay for you.
Oh, no, you, this is amazing stuff. Let me just think about what you've been saying and make the most of the last few minutes. Um, do you believe in IQ? God, that's such an interesting question. I want to tell you why. I'm going to give you a little background. Uh, every year, the, the, uh, faculty at the writing faculty at University of San Francisco has to give a reading for the student body. It sort of equals the skills. And I'm currently writing an essay, like a memoir, and part of it is my mom giving me an IQ test when, when I was a kid. So um, uh, I'm not only I'm, – I'm actually writing about IQ right now. She, she, she brought home the IQ test because uh, she was a sixth-grade teacher. You got it in the sixth grade. She was a sixth-grade teacher in a different school from mine, but they, it was standardized. They gave it in every school in New York that, that Friday. So Saturday morning, I finished breakfast, and she says, are you done? And I said, yeah. And she says, are you relaxed? I said, sure, Mom. What's, what's going on? She goes, see this here? And I looked, and she says, this is the IQ test you took yesterday. I want you to fill it out exactly how you filled it out yesterday. So because she wanted to know my IQ. So I guess the uh, enlightened answer would be I don't believe in IQ because it's, it's a numerical a number on intelligence, but deeply in my heart, I believe in IQ as much as I believe in Judaism, <laughs> because uh, that happened that Saturday morning, and always in my house, the two questions would be, is he Jewish, is he smart? And those, I always think about those things. Now, whatever creativity I have has nothing to do with my IQ. I know that. It's a different thing. But... Um, I am aware that I'm a fairly intelligent person, and I tie that into my IQ. Do you have any thoughts on the decline of the newspaper as a business proposition and a journalistic proposition? It breaks my heart. I, I love a newspaper. I, I love the way they look. I love the way they feel. I love the way they crackle. Um, uh, I worry uh, about being out of a job, and some of my friends are out of jobs. I hate the idea... I'm very conservative in my mentality, and I hate the idea that that uh, mode of thinking and reading and behaving is uh, becoming extinct. I'm not thrilled with what's replacing it. Uh, I, so it's a it's a it's a passing of it's a cultural passing. It's 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 sort of a death, and I it makes me very sad. I love the way the New York Times looks. It's not only that I, I, I really like the paper, but Sunday morning when I look at that front page, I like the type, I like the layout, I like the way it looks. Um, do you think there might be real significant physical differences between different types of races that, that might account for why there are a higher percentage of certain races in certain sports and certain positions? And like you know, long distance athletes come from a particular part of Africa, and sprinters, I think, come tend to come from a certain part of the Caribbean. Do you have any thoughts? I'm not. Uh, I have no expertise in that field, so whatever I would say would uh, be ridiculous. So I'm just going to pass on that one. How do you feel about how race is covered by sports writers? Okay, um, I, that's, that's the hardest question you've asked me. I know that uh, African-American athletes feel uh, that they're basically covered by a white press and that there's, let's say, there's, there's some sort of a cultural barrier and that we don't understand them and, or represent them quite accurately. And my feeling is they're probably right. But because I'm a white guy, I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I'm, I'm not, I don't have their point of view. I have my point of view. Uh, I, I do think it's an issue. I think it would be great if there were more African American sports writers, and if they weren't only covering the NBA. You know, they always seem to they put them on the NBA, and that that's a stereotype as well. I wish they were all over the place um, more. Um, I'm, uh, but. If you're asking me, is there a resentment from white writers to black athletes? I don't think so. I mean, I haven't seen that. I, 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 there, I think there's, there's conflict between athletes and writers. I don't think there's any more between writers and black athletes. Um, 
I think one of the the biggest, if not the biggest, faux pas that you can make in education.